All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back to the third installment of the new Sunday Site Visit series, live from Egypt and exclusively here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. This week, I make an expedition to Saqqara to investigate the Pyramid of Winis, including the geology of the Eastern Temple, the layout of the conduit system, the large pits, underground shaft systems, the Persian tomb, the sliding valve mechanism, inside the reaction chambers and the satellite hydraulic press mechanism. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see things in this episode that no one has presented or discussed before. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button because you do not want to miss the content that I have coming up very soon. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, Grab some merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, now is the perfect time. My handle is at the land of chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone. Welcome back. <laughs> and I am out here on site today in Saqqara to investigate the Pyramid of Winis. And you may be noticing, I don't know if you can see it in the distance behind me, but the Step Pyramid is back there somewhere. And a couple quick notes. It is jam packed out here today. And I am always shocked and disappointed at how quickly these tour groups run in and out of these sites. They show up with bus fulls of 30 people, they walk through the main entrance to the step pyramid and then they leave. A couple of pictures for the gram, yada yada, pyramid of Djoser, Imhotep, etc., etc. And you may notice that no one even comes this way. Everybody went over there. There's absolutely not a single person walking over in this direction, which is why I come this way because I'm going to proceed up the causeway toward the Pyramid of Winis, which is what I am here to investigate today. Some unfinished business and some research to document. And as always, I will be taking you all along on this adventure with me. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Yalla bina, let's go. All right, everyone. And I hope you all are also noticing the difference in the equipment. And I'm out here testing out this new GoPro as I did pick up a few technological upgrades on my way out of the United States. There's the step pyramid in the distance. And one thing that I wanted to show you before we get to the Pyramid of Winis and I am incredibly excited to finally document this because I had so many ignorant people commenting on my previous videos about floating the stones with wood and on wooden boats. And they say, oh, there are no depictions in Egypt about them moving stones on wooden boats. Well, look exactly what we have here. This is a depiction of a wooden boat. And you can see here the floral top of a column. So this is a huge stone column that they are moving on a boat. And you can see here the front of the boat is configured with a ramp. This is the boat here. And these are the two pillars with the floral top. 
and the inscription on this piece says that this is a depiction. And there's actually several of them here. Of them moving an order of stones from Elephantine Island. Here's another one right here. testing the playback feature to make sure this thing is running because the screen cuts off and again I'm just working with some new equipment today so just bear with me all right so here's some guys here's the column the column there's the top of the column a stone column being floated on a boat again the hieroglyphic inscriptions describe an order of stone being placed, quarried from Elephantine Island and delivered to the building site. You cannot argue or dispute this, ladies and gentlemen, or any lost ancient high technologist theorists out there. And I know machines and levitation devices and all of this nonsense. No, it was simple physics, hydraulics, fluid dynamics, and an incredible amount of ancient knowledge. And I know for a fact that these guys have seen these depictions because Yusuf, same guy that I work with, also works with those guys. And he shows this every single time we come out to Saqqara. Yet they are still preaching the nonsense narrative of lost ancient high technology. Yes, it involved physics. Yes, it involved fluid dynamics, hydraulics. And these type of boats or rafts could have been floated in channels and locks directly to the building site. And if they could load these stones onto the boat, then they could load them off of there. This is an inarguable fact that would. The buoyancy of Lebanese cedar was prized in the ancient world because that is what they used to build the crafts, build the boats, build the floats that literally floated these stones to the site. So I just wanted to document this piece because there were a lot of people arguing in my video about floating stones and methane lamps that there were no wooden crafts in ancient Egypt that could float stone. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen. stones being floated on wood. End of story. And now we will proceed up the causeway. Oh, that's an awesome shot. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I'm going to just take you guys on this walk with me so you can see what it's like to walk up this causeway. And I might as well discuss what we will be investigating today. So, unfinished business at the Pyramid of Winis. I will be doing some documentation of the geology around the outside of the structure, investigating the calcite conduits. I'm gonna see if I can find some origin points, maybe some more indications of fluid dynamics around the structure. We're gonna look for more channels. I mean, it's beautiful out here today. And I have my first Land of Chem tour announcement. The Land of Chem 2023 Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour. Planning is underway for September of this year. And I will be taking all of you on this adventure with me. There will be no bullshit pulling up to the site pictures for the gram and then leaving. We will spend an entire day out here at Saqqara to do this exact same thing. Investigate the Pyramid of Winis, including entrance inside of the structure. We will then investigate both the southern tomb, quote unquote tomb, and the inside of the Step Pyramid. If the Imhotep Museum is open, we will check that out. And then we'll also get entrance into the Serapium of Saqqara. 
and it takes all day to do this properly so again always very disappointed to see these tour guides and these bus fulls of people <laughs> it's a travesty but i hope you all have come to expect more from me here on the land of chem and it is my pleasure to deliver this is why i'm here so here we go and i truly believe that underneath this causeway there is most likely an underground shaft system leading from the river up to the site all right so now we are going to be crossing through the threshold of the eastern temple of the pyramid of Winnes here and you can see the two granite columns that once flanked the entrance into this temple system and usually I kind of rush through this area but today there's no rush I have about two hours so the pyramid of Winnes closes at noon so it's about 10 o'clock now so I'm gonna take my time and as we did in Giza I am going to just kind of wander around a little bit to investigate and see what we find because I want to document not only the perimeter of the structure but again also indications of fluid dynamics different types of geology there's a number of different types of stone out here we have limestone white calcite crystal quartzite and red granite And I hope you all are also noticing the additional stabilization control with this little GoPro here, which is certainly much better than my camera. All right, so geological types number one. So we started here, the two red granite columns and red granite is prolific at all the sites i will be doing an episode coming up soon where i give an introductory explanation to the activation and operation of the inverse piezoelectric property as related to the red granite the function of these structures and the chemistry that was occurring therein so let me document and explain a few things here okay this red granite this is red quartzite a different material also has high quartz content this is the same material from which the conduit and collection bowl at Abu Sir were carved. It's not red granite, it's red quartzite, a different type of material. So I wanna be very clear to differentiate between all of these things. And then here, we will begin to see the integrate calcite crystal, otherwise known as alabaster. And again, we tested the function of this on the electromagnetic energy field machine. If you haven't seen that episode, check out episode 33 to get your introduction into the function of the geology and the geophysics that are related to the operation of these structures. And to me, this is just absolutely gorgeous material. And you can see the crystal in nature here. Again, I'll be discussing the role of the crystal as related to that inverse piezoelectric property coming up here very soon. And once I get familiar with this site, my intention is to come back out here and begin to document, make drawings of the different placement 
of the geology located within the temple and, and get a ground map of exactly which areas are calcite, which areas are limestone, which areas are red granite so that we can really start putting together some answers about what these things are. I am here to do real research, ladies and gentlemen. This is not regurgitating lost ancient high technology nonsense. And here's more of the calcite crystal. And those bubbles are natural in appearance. Not melted limestone, not heated bubbled limestone. Calcite crystal, completely different type of stone. So here is a red granite pillar and a red quartzite base. And I'm gonna take a walk. I just saw one of the guards letting a lady stand up on that thing. That mound over here so i'm going to take a walk up there here in a second it's nice and cool out here today it's not sunny yet this is more calcite crystal so a perfect day to be out here and i'm not getting sunburned all right here's more red quartzite and it appears that for the most part this entire area here this section is interlocking blocks of quartzite and calcite crystal. And it's so nice to not be in a rush because I never have to leave. <laughs> I'm not here on a tour. I'm just a local guy. <laughs> Finally, my life's dream complete. And big blocks of calcite crystal here. One, two. All these are big blocks of calcite crystal. And take a walk over here. As on the Giza Plateau, there are shafts excavated down into the bedrock all over the place. There's a big one there. And it just goes down and down and down. And any of you that has seen my video on the Osiris shaft, who knows what is down in these things. And if they found all of that spectacular construction, the containers down inside the Osiris shaft, which taps into the underground water, just imagine what they would find in some of these. This is another huge pit, unexcavated pit. And this piece here is actually black granite. This piece here. All right. And let me show you something else while we're still here on the outside. And there's a bunch of kind of tour groups that are filing in over here. Of course, nobody's looking at what I'm looking at. But I do want to show you something very quickly because I think these could possibly be functional as well. And I highly doubt that they are from the period that is reported. All right, we'll walk around here. I gotta say, I'm loving this new GoPro. All right, so you see there's a pit there. There's a pit here and there's a pit here, sinking down into the bedrock. Of course, it's filled with sand and un unexcavated. And there's a whole bunch of them over here. There's one. There's a bunch of them covered up with concrete here. There's one over there. There's another one here. So a half a dozen, if not more. There's one, two, three small ones, four or five larger ones, and then these three massive ones here. And you can see, we'll walk over on the other side. There's another pit on the adjacent side over here. There's 
number three. There were some, again, these blocks are not an original part of that. It's come, come along much later so people could get down there. Here's one of the ones that's covered up with concrete. I'm sure their explanation is they're doing that for your safety and security. So this is most likely another one that they just built this guard shack on top of. There's another one over there. And here's this massive pit here. So the conventional explanation of these pits, and there's actually some stuff down inside some of these. Let me show you, because I think this is pretty fascinating. Okay, so remember these containers, they're all empty. Every single one of them. And I was discussing with Larry Paul, shout out Larry, Sage Silent, American Institute of Pyramid Research. They just did an expedition out to the Lost Pyramid here in Saqqara. And I will be heading out there as well very, very soon. Which no one ever goes out there. And shout out to Larry for bringing his group out there. Let me show you this first before I look down in there. All right. <laughs> they call these things, quote unquote, Persian shaft tombs. Okay. So you can see here, these configurations of these huge, huge containers. I mean, these are far bigger even than what we see in the Serapium of Saqqara. And they have these vaulted chambers over the top. Conventionally explained as having been built by the Persians. Okay. So look down in here. I hope you can see that. But there is a huge shaft here that goes under this stack of bedrock and most likely goes all the way to the other side. And we'll see the piece over here. So you can look down in there. But look at that. And I'll show you one of these quote-unquote Persian tombs, which is over here. I mean, there's just, there's so much to see out here. And I'm going to be doing multiple expeditions to all of these sites. So if you have any questions, let me know. Anything in particular you want to see, let me know. And I will try and get that documented. So hang on one sec. Let me see if I can find the playback function on this thing. And make sure that I am recording audio. Alright, so apparently this thing doesn't have a playback function. So if I need to do a voiceover on top of that, so be it. I prefer that these experiences be live so that you can see, we'll come back to this in just a minute. So that you can see my reactions, know exactly kind of what I'm looking for, my intentions for coming out to these sites. And I'm looking over here for more evidence of conduits kind of running underneath in between or that would be integrating these things. Again, those indications of the fluid dynamics and erosion I found on the Giza Plateau the other day were, I mean, again, that's a legitimate discovery. And I think something that is very, very important to start pointing out about the Giza Plateau, because it certainly looks like there is some acidic erosion that has occurred up there. Another really spectacular piece of calcite crystal. Okay. This is red quartzite here. And you could see the pieces of quartz in here. It 
it is spectacular out here today. Coming to the sites is always an amazing adventure. But today is just particularly peaceful and beautiful out here. So this is one of those quote unquote Persian tombs and they just put this fence up because you used to be able to get a lot closer to this. So I'm gonna see if we can get a shot down in there. Look at how huge this thing is. This is absolutely massive. So this is just to walk it. Four, six, eight. 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Okay, so a 20 by 30 shaft excavated all the way down into the bedrock. And down at the bottom of these things, this is one of those large containers that I just showed on that diagram, one of these quote unquote Persian tombs. I think that's nonsense. All right, here we go. One of my favorite areas of the structure. And I'm going to come all the way over to this side. And then we will walk the conduit. I wish I could find the inlet or the termination to this thing, but it's all covered up with this, this refuse here. Okay, so right about here, we are in line with the white calcite crystal conduit. And I'm going to follow this right here, okay. block of calcite crystal, block of calcite crystal. This is the beginning of the conduit. And I'm not going to touch or move any sand out here because there's guards kind of watching me. But this is the beginning of the channel. This is calcite crystal here. And this channel goes underneath this limestone right here and it continues into this block here and over the top here so this conduit and just look at the quality of this material here i wish you could see this and feel this man i mean that thing is just completely smooth it is absolutely spectacular and join me ladies and gentlemen the 2023 2023 land of chem ancient alchemy and ascension research expedition and you will be able to touch this for yourself this is a spectacular piece of ancient masonry amazing and again i've proposed in several episodes how you can use a gear ratio machine simple physics gears and gear ratios that with one turn of a wheel on this side you could get 500 turns of a wheel or a drill or a saw or a core on the other side boom there's your explanation no lost ancient high technology, no nonsense, no laser beams, no anti-gravity, physics, intelligence, ancient knowledge, ancient physics, ancient chemistry. So this conduit continues here. And I'm imagining that it would have passed all the way through here because there's the another piece over here that it would have connected into. Okay, so here we go, are the remnants of another block of calcite crystal that's been basically destroyed. And here is the rest of the conduit. Heading over in that direction. Ooh, interesting. Toward one of the pits. 
Hell yeah. This is why I come out here, man. Is to get the juices flowing. And just as we saw over on the Giza Plateau the other day, the termination of that conduit was heading toward the pit-like deposit of iron oxide. Now we're thinking. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk this area so you can see if, if that conduit just continued in this direction, where would it lead? Here, here, here. Over here to this pit. And the conduit would have been buried underneath this limestone floor, just like it is over there. And you can see all the tourists leaving the step pyramid. I'll come over here, walk around for two seconds, and then they'll leave. And I got about an hour and 15 minutes before the pyramid of Winnie's closes. So I'm gonna make my way over there in just a minute so we can go inside and explore. So I can show you some more stuff. And hopefully I will be able to bakshish one of these guards so I can show you an incredibly important and functional part of this structure. So let me get myself situated here. Hang on for just one moment. All right, now we're back. And there's a big old tour. Ooh, look at this piece here. Okay. So granite piece with what looks to be another big conduit running through it here. Again, there's no telling what this piece was originally. Could have been repurposed, etc., etc. but I just happened to notice this. So I'll continue to try and point these kind of things out as we explore these sites. And as with when I go anywhere in Egypt, I stick out like a sore thumb and everybody's looking at me like, who the hell is this guy? That's right, motherfuckers. Eat your heart out. All right, so here we are. This is the eastern side of the Pyramid of Winnie's. And I'm gonna point out a component here that nobody ever even pays attention to. That tour group isn't gonna pay one bit of attention to this, but it's an interlocking sliding stone valve made of red granite. And I showed this in my previous videos, but I wanted to get you some, some better footage of this. So the exterior of the pyramid made of limestone. However, this huge block here made of red granite and these vertical slots held a sliding locking mechanism that went up and down. I believe that this was most likely an inlet for material that was being introduced into the structure. There's some other ways that I think that could have happened and I'll show you that coming up. But again, we're just out here to to think and to learn. So I just want to show you up here real quick. The dovetail on the top of this thing. And that mechanism would have locked into this housing here. And you can see this polygonal area carved out here. There's the other one over there. And the, the sliding lock would have moved up and down this channel, locking the piece into place in the section here. Again, an integral part of the structure that no one ever bothers to point out or explain. And unfortunately, these tourists won't ever hear the truth because their tour guide is out there preaching, oh, God only knows what. So let me get out of Dodge here. And of course, as I start pointing this out, other people will come and look at it too because they want to know what it is. This is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just look at, listen to these guys. They're so full of shit. Here we go. Okay. So now we are on the other side. So a moment ago, I showed you the pit over there in the distance. And it has that shaft leading from that side over here, underneath this entire area. So that pit over there 
is connected via that underground shaft into, let me just turn right around, this shaft here. And let me climb up here so you can see. <clears throat> this is the other end of the shaft. And I'm gonna show you where this system goes because it leads out into what appears to be an ancient drainage basin. Because I truly believe there was, there's a, I hope you can see down in there again. I can't, you can't see a damn thing in the viewfinder when you're out here on these sites because it's so bright. So I just trust that the technology is gonna pick up what I'm trying to show you here. I'm trying to stay out of the way of these people. Okay, so here's the other side of that shaft here so it runs completely underneath the eastern temple and it would have spit out over here into this basin and this looks like it was filled with water completely filled with water and I'm gonna do another video separate video because there's something very important that i want to show you here but it's not it's not the topic for today's video but this entire area was filled with water here it's it's abundantly apparent when you're out here and i'll show you exactly why in a future video so now i'm going to wait for some of these tourists to clear out of the way and then we are going to head inside the pyramid of Winis. stay tuned and just so you can see what i'm up against here and this is the reality of pyramid research. I mean, you could pay for private access to get into all these sites where it's exclusive private entrance. I'm not about to stand here in this line because these people will be in and out in just a few minutes. So we're gonna take a quick walk around the outside while these guys clear out of here. The keepers of the sites. <laughs> this dog's got it made, man. So we're just gonna take a walk around here on the outside. And then we'll circle back to go into the structure. And, all right, here's a good thing to investigate while we're on this side. So we just discussed the coating compound that was on the exterior of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. And these are original casing stones of the Pyramid of Winis. I'm just trying to watch my step here. And these do look brown, but it's not the same material as it is in Saqqara. And I'm pretty sure this is just dirt. Yeah, it's, it's just dirt. Because that material, the coating compound on the casing stones of the red pyramid, it's thick. It is applied in probably a three millimeter layer. And it's very textured and very, very distinct. And I'm just kind of looking. This is just an interesting piece that caught my attention. So this here, this polygonal piece here is limestone, but it looks like this patch right here is uh, either quartzite or calcite crystal it's a very red looking for calcite but it is extremely crystalline so i wonder if there was a post or something that was a crystal <laughs> again this is why this is why i'm doing this and at some point i'm gonna have to take some time and document all of this stuff this will be my life's work ladies and gentlemen unbelievably blessed and grateful i always had a dream as a kid you know watching indiana jones to do archaeology come to egypt and live the adventure and i never thought it could or would be a reality so i don't see any evidence of any sort of coating compound on these stones 
look up here. There's there's no material, it's just the limestone. Alright, and now I'm going to show you some restoration work that was done by the Ministry of Antiquities. Because there's a super clear difference. Okay, these, this piece here, original. Original. Fake. Modern. Also modern. This was built to, internal part was built to stabilize, and this was built to repair and kind of patch everything up. But here you can see the core of the structure. And you can see that this is all raw cut masonry. All the stones of the interior core of the pyramid are raw, unfinished blocks. None of them are the same size. None of them are perfect squares because there was absolutely no need to finish the interior stones. So I always like to point out the, the masonry practices of these ancient builders. And another nonsense narrative that is reported about the Egyptian pyramids is that they're mortarless. That is absolutely not true. Because here is ancient mortar. And this is hard as stone. So this, if you want to call this geopolymer, that's fine. Ancient mortar. But this is real stone, ladies and gentlemen, cut from quarries. Documented that they were cutting and moving stone. So another thing that needs to stop is the narrative of geopolymer. As much as I would love that to be true, it's possible it's true in South America but not here in Egypt. They were cutting and quarrying natural stone for a reason. This is mortar. If you want to call this geopolymer fake stone, I'm okay with that because essentially that's what it is. Because this is hard as stone and might as well be real stone because it's made from tiny stone particles. And with the knowledge of chemistry. But this is real limestone cut from a quarry. So, put in the final nail in the coffin on some myths about the Egyptian pyramids. Absolutely have mortar. And I'm gonna continue to walk back around here and hopefully the burden of the tourist groups has been alleviated so I can go inside and do what I gotta do. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, here we go into the Pyramid of Winis. And thankfully, he kind of stopped the tour group behind me. I see. And speaking a little He's bit coming. of Egyptian goes a long way because I was able to cut a huge line full of tourists to get in here. Come on. And I got about 8% left on the GoPro, so we're going to see what we get in the last couple minutes. That was so funny. So, she was just walking like some things to investigate in here. So, I'm going to see if I can get some documents of the channel running across. <laughs> the white calcite walls inside the primary reaction chamber. I'm also going to show you the termination of what I believe to be the inlet shaft that delivered the initial reactants and water into this structure as it's located in a similar spot to the pit at the bottom of the northern pump shaft in the red pyramid. And you're looking at it right here, big concrete patch right there. And we are now entering into what they call, I guess, the antechamber that leads into the shaft. And then I'll show you the, two of the reaction chambers. Again, we will be discussing very, very soon the role of red granite and the inverse piezoelectric property for the production of ultrasound. One of the greatest and most important discoveries that I have made, or revelations rather, that I have made. And just wait until I finally break everything. It's gonna be absolutely spectacular and exactly what you all have been waiting for. Just, just hang in there with me. Um, I'm gonna see, I'm just waiting for some of these people to clear out so I can film a little bit better. Okay, all red granite. All of this is red granite. Right up until here, which is where the limestone begins. Another reason I wanted to come in here, look at that blue. 
this blue color here in the stars is Egyptian blue, calcium copper silicate that we discussed in the previous episodes. Being a fluorescent material, and I got about 2% left, so I'm about to switch to my phone. Hang in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, lots of people inside here today, so I'm in here in these acoustic amplification chambers. That's exactly what they are. I'm sure you can hear that already. Even just when I talk. This whole chamber resonates. Amplification of the ultrasound. Everyone wants to know, what was the activation of the structures? We will be talking about that very soon. So there's no hieroglyphs in here. <clears throat> so nobody ever comes in here. It's basically an ignored part of the structure. But this is one of the most important functional areas within these chambers. And you will be hearing my full theory regarding the function of these chambers, but this area was filled with nothing but water. And there's a reason that no chemicals were coming in here, just water was coming in here. So I'm gonna let these people clear out of the way and then we'll head back into the primary chambers. So this unfortunate is the reality of trying to do this without private access. And like I said earlier, it is jam-packed out here today. And this one closes at noon, so everybody's trying to get in here before noon. So I'm gonna hang out in here for just a second. and show you what I came in here for. All right, so at the ceiling, all of this stuff was painted with Egyptian blue. Calcium, copper, silicate. A fluorescent material that emits up to 100 times as many photons as it absorbs. It is one of the first synthetic chemicals that was ever produced on this planet. And it is currently being studied for its crystalline lattice structure being used as an anode in a lithium ion battery and also for a surface coating material. And yes, this pyramid does have hieroglyphs. They were all painted with Egyptian blue. Again, another indication that they were producing this compound on an industrial scale. And so they're doing this light show in here that I showed before. And man, I'm gonna have to come back here at a later time because this is just not the ideal time to try and do this. So just bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. You all have already seen what they're seeing in here on my channel. This is the light show in here. But that's not why I came in here. This is why I came in here. This channel at the top of this vaulted ceiling has a function as related to the chemical reactions that were occurring inside of this structure. And there is a channel housed here <coughs> behind the wall so the ceiling leads to a conduit running behind that wall and the last time I was in the primary reaction chamber we did a little bakshish for the guy and he let me climb uh, Hey, of course, remember me from last time. Good to see you, my friend. 
<laughs> That's always good when people remember my face and know who I am. Makes things a lot easier to do what I need to do in here. All right, so again, as this huge group kind of clears out here, take your picture for the gram. Okay, the entire ceiling. Painted with the Egyptian blue. All of those stars were painted with Egyptian blue. All of these hieroglyphs painted with Egyptian blue. So let me walk on through here and get some documentation of what I came in here for. All right. So first, the container. This is not black basalt. This is a material called black greywek, which is a very thermoregulatory material. Very, very important for the operation of this chamber. It's, it's black greywek. It's not basalt. It's black, black greywek. Different type of stone. Very close. Okay. And here, in the floor, this is calcite crystal here. So the container is sitting on top of the white calcite crystal floor. So this is all calcite crystal. You can see that crystalline material that I was showing you earlier. So this is where the limestone ends. And this is where the crystal begins, exactly where the container is. And that's very specifically done. Again, I'll show you what this guy's about to show them, which is the shadow figure. You guys have all seen it before. And here's the separation between limestone and calcite. And the shadow figure is over here. I won't ruin it for these guys. So let me get out of the way here. And I'm gonna get the hell out of Dodge because a, it's about to close. But this is real life. And this is what you all can anticipate coming into these pyramids. You know, they're, they're tourist sites. People aren't here to do research. They're here to see the pyramids. So we will be back. <laughs> Pretty awesome day. I love coming out here. Saqqara is one of my favorite spots. And again, you can see the conduit. Oop, keep dropping my sunglasses. The conduit here. The ceiling does not meet the wall. And I was able to get up there and look up here. And there is a channel that runs through here. Behind that wall, connected directly into the ceiling. And any of you know about simple chemical apparatus, probably already have an idea of the function of this chamber. Maybe not the chemical reactions, but the mechanisms of operation. It was clear as day to me, as soon as I walked in this chamber, exactly what this chamber was for. So now we can breathe in here a little bit. And I highly doubt he's gonna let me get up there now just because there's too many people, but we will save that for a later date. I really hope you enjoyed today's footage. Yalavina, let's go. All right, and I finally got a minute to stop in here. And I am standing in between. This is red granite. This is red granite. And this is where there were originally three red granite valves. One here, one here, and one here. <laughs> Very similar configuration to the three red granite valves, stone valves, inside of the antechamber of the Great Pyramid. And you can see the housing up here. And this is remnants from the excavation and exploration process. So you can see that there were tunnels dug out 
through this limestone to circumvent these red granite valves because this whole thing here would have been completely blocked with a massive piece of red granite. And one of the things that I wanted to point out is the concrete patching here. This is a concrete patch. This actually went down into the floor. So the sliding red granite valve moved up and down and locked into this piece. And I guarantee you that underneath this concrete patch, there's another shaft that had your hydraulic press mechanism. Because there is also a satellite pyramid here in Saqqara at the Pyramid of Winis. And I'm glad I reminded myself of that because that will be our next stop. Yeah, buddy. It is on. So here we go in housing number two. You can see the other side of that tunnel. Ah, salam alaikum, baby. Hang on one second, let me talk to this guy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as I have explained in previous episodes, all of the pyramids that have the sliding stone valve system, the central pyramid, the bent pyramid, and the pyramid of Winis, all have satellite pyramids. The three stone valves within the Great Pyramid did not move. Those were locked in place. There is no satellite pyramid within the reservoir of the Great Pyramid. But if you look at the configuration of the Central Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, and the Pyramid of Winis, all of those structures have a satellite pyramid enclosed within the reservoir. And I just wanted to show you this real quick. So this is the Step Pyramid Complex. We are here at the Pyramid of Winis. And you can see here, this little guy right here is the satellite pyramid of the Pyramid of Winis. And it is enclosed within the external reservoir surrounding the structure. And you can see those three pits here that I showed you earlier indicated on the side. And this is where the satellite pyramid was. On the southern side of the Eastern Temple. So you take this causeway in here into the Eastern Temple, and this is the satellite pyramid over here. So now that I have documented my claims, as is appropriate for any scientific research, we're gonna take a walk over here and stand on top of the mound where that satellite pyramid would have sat. And these satellite pyramids, as I have described before, are hydraulic press mechanisms. They all have the exact same internal configuration. They were filled with water from the external reservoir. Your pump block mechanism slid down the northern pump shaft, compressing the water into the hydraulic press. And any of you know how a hydraulic press works, there is an inverse relationship between the size of your initial piston and your press piston. Small initial piston and much larger secondary mechanism, which exponentially increases the force and what a spectacular view from up here of the entire Eastern Temple. So again, let me get situated here. Those red granite columns into the field of stones that remain of the Eastern Temple. 
And again, from this vantage point, this is where I will begin my documentation of the layering of the geology in the site. You can see here as we pan over to the pyramid itself, And from experience, I'm trying to pan and zoom a little bit more slowly so you can really see everything. I'm going to take a little walk over here. I may get yelled at, I may not. this is the approximate location. Ooh, hell yeah. Look at that. In the distance. You see that? <laughs> the red and bent pyramids of Dashur. Hell yeah, that is awesome. And just as I explained in the previous episode regarding the ancient passage chamber structures of Ireland, there is a visual connection between those structures on the landscape. You're standing at Newgrange, you can see Noth. You can always see the next one in the distance. It's the exact same as what we have here. tuned for more live exclusive on-site content real research from here in Egypt Salam alaikum all right everyone that is it for today's video this was the third installment of the new Sunday site visit series live from Egypt and exclusively here on the land of Kem YouTube channel in next week's expedition gonna be a surprise so I won't spoil it but it's gonna be absolutely amazing so if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button because you do not want to miss the premieres of these exclusive site visits every single week, not to mention the usual research-related content premiering Thursday mornings. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab some merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time. <laughs>